Hey everybody, it's Paul from Inside PA Training. I wanted to share with you uh, how to do a little stethoscope maintenance. Um, I'm actually not going to show you how to do it, but I'll show you how you know if you need to do stethoscope maintenance. Um, first off, you got a stethoscope. Usually the tubing is pretty durable and it lasts a good long time. If you need to clean it, soap and water only. Okay. Uh, I made the mistake of cleaning one of my stethoscope tubes once with, uh, I don't know, I think there was paint on it, and I saw so I used some nail polish remover, which is acetone, and that's a pretty harsh solvent on a plastic. And what it did, uh, it's probably this one, I don't know if you can see, this tubing is not particularly shiny, it's kind of dull, and it has a slightly sticky, gummy feel to it because I washed it with that uh, acetone. It should be shiny like you see up here by the, uh, by the stem of the chest piece. So soap and water only or you will damage the tubing. Thankfully so far it still works. It just doesn't have the right feel and I think if I washed it regularly with the solvent it would ruin the tubing. The other, the other thing that you can check out is at the joints like right here you can kind of bend the tubing and see if you see any cracks uh, or uh, bend the joints back like that. Sorry this is getting annoying. Bend the joints back like that, and if you see a little crack in there, you know you're losing sound. So you'd want to replace the tubing. And the tubing can be kind of expensive depending on the stethoscope. But uh, you know, why use a stethoscope if you're going to use one that isn't working properly? There's just no point. So, uh, so regularly, you're going to want to clean your stethoscope tubing. Another maintenance feature um, that has more to do with public safety is uh, at least once a day. I recommend for every patient that you have contact with, if you can remember to do it use an alcohol prep pad and clean off the diaphragm, um, both diaphragms if you have two, or the diaphragm and the bell, because uh, they've done studies, and diaphragm of a stethoscope is one of the biggest vectors for infection um, in healthcare. So you listen to someone, and if you're doing it properly, you're listening directly to their skin, and then you go and you listen to somebody else, and you've washed your hands, but you haven't cleaned this. Now you've transmitted bacteria from one patient to the other. So clean it off. All it takes is a little alcohol prep pad, a couple seconds wiping, and let it dry, and you're done. So uh, that's we have item one is the tubing. Item two is the cleaning the diaphragm. Now item three is a little more involved. How do you know if you need to replace the diaphragm? Sometimes, I mean, if you break it, it's kind of obvious. Like it looks like a drum with a crack in it. But um, Sometimes it's more subtle than that, and I noticed the other day my stethoscope wasn't quite, it didn't sound right. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, so I did a little test, and uh, it's a pretty handy test. I haven't seen it anywhere else. I don't know why, but what you do, as we know from previous videos, this is just a hole in here. There's no diaphragm. So you cover one with your finger, and then after hopefully washing this tip, you blow on it very gently back and forth. And if you have a good um, diaphragm that doesn't need repairing or replacement, you won't hear anything and you'll see it move back and forth. If you have a bad one like mine, you might not see it move at all. Mine actually moves, but you'll hear air escaping from it. Uh, let's see, is it on the diaphragm or the, the large? It's on the small diaphragm right now, so I'll start with that one. So again, cover one ear tube. Blow gently in the other one. Don't blow hard. You don't want to ruin your stethoscope. You can make it need a repair if you're not careful. Um, and watch for that diaphragm to move up and down. See how it's moving up and down? And that, it should be that way, but what you shouldn't have is the sound that goes with it. That rushing air noise is air escaping from the seal where the diaphragm connects to the chest piece. And that's a problem for two reasons. Number one, Air lost through the chest piece uh, means you have sound transmission that you could could be going to your ears that's lost before it even goes through the tube. But also, if you have air escaping from here, it can um, uh, e even if you're listening to a heart a heart sound or a lung sound, that small bit of air rushing out makes its own noise, and that will be that noise will be transferred up the tube to your ears, and you might hear a, a sort of hissing or a rushing sound that's going to confuse you, and you're going to say. Um, you know, I don't think this person has a heart murmur or whatever, but I hear this weird noise. So make sure you have a good diaphragm. So I actually have two Litton Cardiology 3 stethoscopes because I think they're awesome, uh, reasonably priced, whatnot. Um, and this one has the problem too, if I remember. 
So again, cover one, we'll do that one. You hear that noise, you shouldn't hear that. Whereas if you listen to the diaphragm, I think the diaphragm's working. No noise at all. So run that test on your stethoscope for both diaphragms. If you have a bell, then this test isn't gonna tell you anything because there's no membrane to need to replace anyway. But if you have two diaphragms like I do, run this test on each side. And if it makes a rushing noise or, or, or if you um, hear air escaping, get that replaced. It's a pretty cheap repair. I think if you call the Littman company, they can mail you a new one for, I don't know what it is. I think the membranes, I think it comes in a kit, both membranes, and it's probably five, six bucks. I'm not even sure. Um, you probably pay more in shipping than you do for the membranes. But it's considered a regular maintenance item for a stethoscope. And if you have one side that's working and one side that's not, do yourself a favor and replace them both because they're both the same age. They're going to wear out similar time. So if you have one that's not working, the other one probably not be working pretty soon too. So there you have it. A nice, easy couple of uh, maintenance items you can run on your stethoscope. Make sure it's working. I think it's better to use, a, use equipment that's fully functional. Um, so I hope that helps you. Any questions, comments, leave them on YouTube. Leave them on the blog at mypatraining.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.